So here we go. Welcome back to another edition of the League One Lowdown. And I'm joined, and as always, it's a pleasure to be joined by Chris Erickson, from the man who covers all things Plymouth Argyle. Chris, thanks very much for joining me. How are you doing? My pleasure, Ross. Yes, I hope you've had a good summer. Um, yeah, it's um, it's gone by quickly though, hasn't it? And we're we're here chatting about a new season starting on July the 30th. It, it just starts earlier and earlier every year, doesn't it? It does, mate. And uh, yeah, we're gearing ourselves up for 46 league games, all cup competitions and all that sort of stuff. But it's always good fun. It's going to be an interesting season, my friend. Uh, let's um, rewind a little bit and go back to um, last season for Plymouth. Um, I put them down as dark horses. And well, they did surprise a lot of people there in the playoffs for a very long time. And the final day, missing out after getting hammered by MK Dons. Um, how would you look back at last season? You know, of course, uh, Ryan Lowe left and Schumacher came in. How would you look back at last season? Yeah, if you'd offered an Argyle fan a seventh place finish at the start of last season, they'd have been highly delighted. Um, of course, as the season transpired and they had a fantastic 17-game unbeaten league run on the top of the table for you know quite a while and in and around the top six all season, really. And then to, to miss out, as you say, on the final day of the season uh, with a 5-0 home defeat by Milton Keynes Zons. Um, yeah, it was an anti-climax. Um, you know, with the benefit of a few weeks and months passing, seventh in League One was nothing to be ashamed of. It was a great effort by that Argyle squad. Um, disappointing that it ended that way, but um, it's left them, I think, well positioned to um, to have another good crack at it this season. Indeed. And um, next question is the current mood in the Argyle fan base. Um, yeah, you snapped the, everyone, all fans would have snapped their hand off for the seventh place finished. Um, what are they wanting next season, pretty much, or this season, basically, um, and how are they feeling going into this one? I mean, everyone wants to improve on the previous season, don't they? Uh, I think that's the, the minimum aim. Wherever you finish the previous season, you want to get better and improve and keep going forward and feel that your club is progressing. I've got to certainly doing that off the pitch, um, the, the, the stadium. And, and the fan base is good and strong and growing. Um, so off the pitch, I think they're, they're well set. Um, if they were to get into the championship, the club is ready for it. But as, as Argyle fans know, as Ipswich fans know, wanting to get into the championship is one thing. Actually achieving it and getting there is a lot harder. Um, and Ipswich fans will know that. Argyle fans um, have seen their team in the championship the last time was in 2010 12 years ago so it's 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 not easy to get, get back there but i think based on last season the, like i say i got in a good position to try and push forward um they've only lost one player since the end of last season one of the young defenders um ollie tomlinson who was released by the club uh they had some loan signings they've returned to their per, uh, parent clubs but um they brought in five summer signings um, four of them have spent most of the pre-season with Argyle and, and look to have settled in well and look, um, and it's still early days, as though they will improve and strengthen the squad. So with those five summer signings added to the squad that did so well last season, I think the hope is um, that the Argyle will do well. The super optimistic Argyle fans will be thinking they're going to get promoted. The optimistic fans will maybe be thinking playoffs and maybe the... The slightly sort of pessimistic ones might think, well, maybe we might struggle to improve on seventh. But um, I think on balance, I think most people think that, you know, I'll, you know, should be able to, um, to have a decent season. Whatever a decent season turns out to be, you know, is anyone's guess. Indeed, indeed. And uh, let's talk about those transfers then, the the, the permanent deals and all that sort of stuff and the loan deals. Um, one that stands out for me, who had a great season last year at Newport County, of course, on loan from Aston Villa is Finn Azaz. Um, really did impress me when I did ever watch a Newport County game. You'd be thinking, why are you watching Newport County games, Ross? You know, it is what it is. If it's on telly, I'll watch it. Um, but he's one of the key ones. Um, name the other players, some other good ones, some good loans, but loanees as well. Yeah, I just try to touch on, uh, on on them for you, Ross. I mean, you mentioned Finn Azaz, and, and if you'd asked me the question, Chris, which of the five summer signings has impressed you most, it would be Finn Azaz. He does look um, a real good prospect. He's on a season-long loan from Aston Villa. Um, he, as you say, he staffed for Newport last season. He got into the League Two team of the season. 
and Newport were only mid, mid table. It wasn't like they were one of the top teams in the division. So any time that you can get in the team of the season, having played for a mid table team, you must be doing something right. Um, and he was also the lead two young player of the year. Um, he's brought cre- creativity to the team. Scored a couple of goals in pre season already. Um, high hopes that he and Danny Meyer in the midfield will make sure that Argyle create plenty of uh, scoring chances for their attacking players. Um, Of the other players they brought in, um, perhaps less um, exciting to the eye, but Matt Butcher, a box-to-box midfielder that they got from Accrington Stanley, played for Accrington for a couple of years. And as everyone knows, Accrington are always a decent side, always hard to beat, always capable of producing upsets. He was one of their key players for the last two years, so he looks a, a good addition coming in on a, on a as a free agent. The other free agent signing they made was Mikkel Miller from Rotherham United. He was part of their um, promotion-winning squad last season. He's been brought into play as a left wing-back because Argyle like to play the wing-back system. Uh, very pacey. Again, he's um, stood out in pre-season. And they've made two other season-long loans as well in addition to those players. Barley Mumba from Norwich City, uh, just up the road. Um, he's come in to compete with the captain, Joe Edwards, for the right wing-back role. And then the last signing they made, which was um, last week, uh, Morgan, Morgan Whitaker, who was at Lincoln City uh, on loan at the back end of last season from Swansea, a 20-year-old, good prospect, needs to play regular football and uh, build up his confidence and, and get a few goals. And Argyle are hoping that he will do that with them. Indeed. And... Uh... We've got to talk about it because it's always a big talking point. He's, um, of course, last year was Plymouth. You know, um, well, every time I watched him play for Plymouth, he was unbelievable. And that is, of course, Kamara. Um, he's still at the club, of course. Um, trans list and all that sort of stuff. Um, can you give us an update what's been going on with him? Because I know town fans will be interested to know what's been going on. And, uh, you know, he's, a, he's a, a player that a lot of League One clubs, Championship clubs will be interested in. Yeah, I mean, when he's at his best, I, I think he's one of the one of the best, certainly one of the most energetic players in League One. He was transfer listed because Argyle offered him a, a new long-term contract, um, which he hasn't signed. Um, he Argyle took up a 12-month option in his contract, hence he is still at the club now and, as things stand, will be for the course of the season. Although at the end of this season, he would then be uh, a free agent and able to move somewhere somewhere else for, for no fee. So I think Argyle wanted to get him tied up to a long-term contract. And if not, um, you know, look to sell sell him, basically, and get some money back for him. Um, he did have an injury at the back end of last season. One of the one of the final games, uh, it was on Easter Monday against Sunderland. Uh, he, he limped out of the game. He's had a few injury problems in the summer. Hasn't been too much talk about him leaving and, you know, transfer speculation about where he might go. Um, but, you know, when a player is injured, it's, it's not always easy to... Uh, you know, or clubs are maybe not going to consider making an offer for him until they know he's fit again. He's played a couple of the games in pre-season, but not all of them. So uh, I wouldn't say he's fully up to speed at the moment. But as you know, Ross, the, the transfer window doesn't close until September the 1st, I think it is this year. Um, so you've got the best part of a month at the start of the season for uh, Kamara to get games, get fitness, um, force his way into the team, start showing what he's capable of again. And, um, and things may change as we get towards the end of August. But uh, at the moment, he needs to get himself fully fit, up to speed. And uh, when he gets a chance to play for Argyle, we'll show him the uh, the Green Army, what he's capable of, as he has done in the previous two seasons. Indeed. And uh, sorry to repeat this for you, Chris, but this is going to be your 26th season covering yes. NFL goal up and down the country. Uh, this is the Plymouth's first season back in League One as well. Uh, Stephen mm. Schumacher's first full season in charge. Um, yes. What do you reckon then, Chris? What, what's your thoughts for this season ahead? Yeah, it's, it's a good point you make about it being Stephen Schumacher's first full season. Um, 38. Um, I was looking at the the managers in league across League One, Ross, and it's a real trend, isn't it? And Ipswich have obviously played their part in it as well, where um, I think I looked in the summer and only two of the managers in League One or head coaches or whatever you want to call them, um, only two of them are 50 and over. Uh, Jimmy Floyd, Hasselbank, and Steve Cottrell, if uh, if memory serves me right. Um, so Schumacher, Ryan Lowe before him at Argyle, Kieran McKenna, Liam Manning. You know, you you look around League One and um, it's full of um, exciting young managers, isn't it? Playing, a, 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 in, in most cases, a good brand of football. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing that. 
uh, from an Argyle perspective, yeah, if if they can just keep on improving, you know, the last two or three years they've got a little bit better, a little bit better, and clearly if they improve this season, it means they're going to be in the playoffs at least, and and that would be represent a good season in what will be, you know. We seem to talk about it a lot, but it's a tough league one, isn't it? You look at the teams, you've got the teams that have come down. Um, you look at the number of former Premier League clubs in the division. Um, you know, it's you know, the top, I don't know, top 10, top 12 teams in the in League One would all feel that they could be competitive in the championship, wouldn't they? You know, fan bases, uh, size of clubs, etc., history and things like that. So, it, no... It, you don't want to be in League One, you want to be in the Championship, but it is a strong league. It's a competitive league with decent players and, and decent opposition and decent football. So I think it's a, a season for us to all look forward to, no matter who uh, who our respective clubs are and who we report on. Yeah, indeed. It's going to be a big season, big clashes all, all across the county from up the top of the league to the bottom of the league. It's going to be very interesting. And Chris, um, let's talk about the head-to-head between Town and Argyle. Um, first yep. of all, it's a trip to um, home park for Town on in, in September, so that's an early door sort of game. You know, we'll sort of find out how, how everyone's getting on. A few defeats here and there for certain teams, I'm sure. Mm. And then, of course, it's early January where Plymouth travel down the Portman Road, and as you said, very much still cold in winter time <laughs> in Suffolk. Um, but both games, um, Plymouth got a win at Home Park, then Town won at Portman Road. They're always interesting battles, and as you said, it'll be two young coaches going head to head. What's your thoughts going into those two games? Well, I was impressed with Ipswich when they played Argyle at Portman Road at the end of March. Um, it did feel a little bit that day, and it was a fantastic tribute to Paul Mariner that day. What a fantastic day that was. Ipswich did a great job of, you know, arranging everything that day. I think the ground was virtually full, wasn't it, that day? And from an Argyle perspective, it felt like we we were sort of walking into something that, it wasn't meant to be Argyle's day that day. You know, it was, it was Ipswich coming together, paying tribute to a fantastic servant, remembering good times and at the same time feeling that, you know, that their, their club is rebuilding again. And so it, it was a tough day for Argyle that day. I think the defeat was only 1-0 in the end, but I think most people would agree that Ipswich could have won that by more on the day. They were the better team on the day. Um, but down at home part, I, I think, it probably felt a bit like that from an Ipswich point of view. Um, Argyle paid tribute to Paul Mariner. And that day was, it was proud of the season and out. The atmosphere, fans got right behind Argyle. And so I think on balance, what we saw in both of those games is that home advantage, you know, can be still in this modern day, be quite important. And with um, passionate, noisy, loud support behind the home team, um, you know, that, that should give you a little bit of an edge. So, We'll see how it works out this season. Yeah, indeed. And of course, the, both trips are always going to be a weekend, you know, double header pretty much. You know, you're just going to enjoy your weekend in Devon or enjoy your weekend in Suffolk because, yeah, doing that in a day. I'm, I'm sure people will do. You, you, I never know, Chris. Will you do be doing that in a day or are you planning to do it, stay over? No, I would like to try and travel up on the Friday if I could, although yeah. uh, it will be in the middle of January, won't it? So, uh, yeah. you know, hopefully the weather is, uh, is kind to us. But uh, no, it's a... It's a long old trek for anyone going between Home Park and Portman Road and Plymouth and Ipswich, but it's all part of the fun. So, um, yeah, no, look, those are the sort of games, you know, you know, that, again, from from an Argyle fan's point of view, you're going to be looking out for Ipswich, Derby, Sheffield Wednesday, teams like that, big big clubs, big fan bases. Um, you know, sometimes at Home Park, um, some, of the, some of the smaller clubs don't bring too many away fans and, you know, it can almost sometimes feel like, you know, if there's a couple of hundred away fans, it affects the atmosphere. Um, and it is quite nice when you get a club, whoever it is, that brings 1,000, 1,500 away fans, pumps up the home fans, creates a better atmosphere, um, inspires the players, probably both sets of players. You get a better game of football out of it sort of thing. So, um, so yeah, our, our lip switch games, uh, you know, have, have been good in recent seasons. Uh, it's been a bit up and down for Argyle, but... Uh, yeah, much better than playing in those games when we didn't have any fans at the games at all. And uh, thinking back to what was it the season before last, and uh, the contrast between seeing Argyle play at Portman Road that COVID season with no one there, and then last season there was what twenty six thousand or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, huge difference. But that's that's why we love football: the fans, the noise, the atmosphere, the excitement. 
Definitely, mate. Well said, as always. Well, Chris, uh, thanks so much for joining me. It's always a pleasure. Any other business? Anything else you want to mention, my friend? No, i just hoping that uh, everyone has a good season this year um, and make the most of it. Um, you know, things are tricky in the real world, aren't they? So I think football's a good release for all of us to, uh, to whatever, you know, whatever, whatever happens, go and, go and watch the football, enjoy watching your team. And, um, yeah, wish you all the all the best for this season. Safe travels. Uh, you, you do a few miles as well in the, in the course of a season. So uh, we'll be crisscrossing the motorways on, on various Saturdays and Fridays and things. Definitely, Chris. Well, I echo those thoughts as well. And uh, yeah, enjoy your season, everybody. Enjoy your season, Chris, as well. Good luck to everyone. And uh, thanks again for watching and have a League One lowdown. Bye-bye for now.